What kind of food do you specialize in, ma'am? It's Nigerian food, uh, but look, for me, it's about bringing the healthy twist to Nigerian food. We know a lot of our food are full of carbs and oil. Uh, so when I'm presenting foods, I'm looking at managing the oil and the carbs. Besides that, I'm also looking at um, bringing creativity to Nigerian foods. Because really for me, I dream of the day I'll be in New York in a top restaurant and I pick up the menu and it's a Nigerian food on the menu. <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask a little bit about your career. How are you able to manage a career and a food blog? You know, well, I mean, if, they talk, if you talk about passion, you know, passion drives you to be walking at 12 midnight when you should be sleeping. You know, so I've lost my social life in the past two years because of the blog. But I tell you, I enjoy every minute of it. So I do my job and I have, you know, like they say, my side hustle. But this side hustle is not to make money, but just to express myself on the platform of food. I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite recipe? My favorite recipe is an epic dish called um, Epan Kuko. And it's made from coco yam. You wrap it in coco yam leaf. It's a one pot meal. I mean, it's a dish to die for, really. <laughs> Two more questions. First of all, what are your top five must know how to make Nigerian soups? You know, first, I mean, if you don't even know how to cook, what's important to a Nigerian is stew, which you use to eat rice and, you know, dodo and the rest of them. A goosey soup that cuts across everywhere, north to south, east to west. Okay, I'll spice it up with a bit of um, okra soup that you need to know. Nigerians like um, yam pottage. You have to know that as well. I think I have five there. <laughs> Wonderful. And then one last question, ma'am. What was your absolute um, a moment that you had in the kitchen where it was just it didn't go right? Um, come again. Do you have any one moment that you ever tried to make something in the kitchen and it didn't go right? Could you share it with us? Look, as a food blogger, so many things go wrong. I mean, what you get to see on Instagram and on social media is what went right. But from time to time, they didn't go right. I, I had this um, concept of um, a core and um, a foriro. You know, so I made the core cup to put a foriro inside. And guess what? You know, a core would stay stable if it is cold. And so I scoop the eforiro onto the echo, wow. and the whole thing just <laughs> disintegrates into the plate. You know, so then I knew that to put eforiro inside a core cups, the eforiro has to be just warm. That was one disaster. But I tell you, there's so many disasters behind the camera. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was lovely talking to you. And um, we hope to see more stuff from you. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, this is Christmas. This is time for food. This is time where we entertain a lot. So um, one Q food platter is going to, you know, bring on quite some interesting dishes for Christmas. Lovely. All right. Thank you very much. Any special Christmas recipes? Oh, yes. I mean, you know, Christmas time is uh, when we eat a lot of rice. But I'm saying, can we get off the jollof rice, fried rice we eat, you know, almost on a daily basis? So we have um, coconut rice, but the way we cook it, the FX cook it, that's interesting. <coughs> we call it a desi soup. We also have cat grey rice, that's also interesting. Um, you know, look, I'm bringing on quite a lot of interesting recipes on rice. I keep that under wraps for now. <laughs>